tyres are one of the most important elements when it comes to the performance of your mountain bike. After all, they're the only thing connecting you and your bike to the ground. There is a vast amount of variation when it comes to tyres. Some, such as their diameter, are obvious. Others, such as their carcass construction, less so. With any tyre though, getting its pressure right for you, your riding and the tyre itself is vital. Sounds scary? Well, don't worry. I'm going to walk you through a few rules of thumb to help you get your tyre pressures just right. Our sponsors Pirelli have sent us six tyres to have a little play around on in the woods today. First up, we've got some 2.2 inch cross country race tyres, so a skinny tread, fast rolling, and they're being set up on a slightly narrower rim. In the middle of the range, I've got some 2.4 inch trail tyres, so these are mixed conditions all rounders, and they're being set up on a 30 mil rim. And I've also got some big, chunky, aggressive 2.6 inch tyres. These are for enduro riders, and they again are set up on some 30 mil internal width rims. I'm going to start with a little disclaimer here. What works for me might not work for you. Everyone has different experiences and preferences when it comes to tyre pressures. So treat this as a guide, not a concrete system. When trying to decide on a tyre pressure, we're always looking to balance a number of things. We want a tyre to remain stable and perform well in corners. It needs to add some insulation from trail features such as rocks and roots to help with grip. It also needs to remain inflated when it suffers a big hit. Nobody likes punctures. And rolling resistance is a big factor too. How do we find a trade-off between grip and rolling speed? I'm going to talk about the various factors first and then we'll go on to some numbers. What to put in at the start and then how to fine tune it for you. The logical place to start when working out your tyre pressure is you and your bike's combined weight. It stands to reason that a heavier rider and bike is going to need higher pressures than a lighter rider. A heavier rider will put more force through the tyres and thus this needs to be balanced with correspondingly higher pressures. Likewise, where are you going to ride? If you're riding somewhere super rocky and rooty, perhaps on fast terrain so you might be hitting those features at speed, you might need to up your pressures a touch. Higher pressures mean less tyre deformation when you hit a rock, and so less chance of it puncturing. Though if pressures are too high, you may increase the risk of tearing your carcass on a sharp edge. Conversely, if you're riding on smoother terrain and perhaps lower speed, lower pressures will allow the tyre to deform more, enabling it to better mould to the ground shape, boosting grip. As you'll notice, there's some nuance here to appreciate. A track in the dry might be very different when it's wet, so your pressures might have to change depending on the trail's condition. Though less measurable, a rider's style might also need to be taken into account. If you're a bit more precise with your riding, weaving smoothly through obstacles, you might get away with a couple of PSI less or a lighter casing tyre than someone with, shall we say, a little more of a point and shoot style. Now, let's look at the tyres themselves. First up is the obvious one, the width of the tyre. This also relates to the overall shape and volume of the tyre, which itself is also dependent on the internal width of the rim. A wider tyre will have a larger volume of air inside it. Likewise, a given tyre on a wider rim will inflate wider than the same tyre on a narrower rim. As a general rule, a larger volume tyre can handle lower pressures before it feels imprecise and there's excessive movement of the tyre on the rim, or before it becomes more susceptible to punctures or burping, whereby the bead of the tyre pulls away briefly from the rim, expelling air. Furthermore, running a higher volume tyre at too high a pressure makes it more likely to feel pingy and skittery. Thus, generally speaking, a higher volume tyre can be run at slightly lower pressures than a lower volume tyre set up. Going a bit deeper into this, wider tyres tend to perform better on wider rims. A wide tyre on a narrow rim can be more light bulb shaped once inflated and prone to rolling side to side on a rim, leading to that imprecise feel. A narrow tyre on a wide rim becomes too square, which changes the feel of the tyre as you lean into a corner and can lead to the shoulder tread squirming and cornering lean angles being reduced. Though there's obvious variations, a narrower 2.2 inch tyre might be better mounted to a rim with an internal width of roughly 25 millimetres. A 2.4 inch tyre mounted to a 25 to 30 millimetre rim is a good starting point. At 2.5 or 2.6 inches wide, we'd be looking for a 28 to 33 millimetre rim. 
and 2.8 inch tyres are likely best suited to a 35mm plus rim. The next key variable with a tyre is its carcass. This refers to how the tyre is constructed. Often manufacturers will supply the same tyre tread and width with a number of carcasses, as different carcasses have pros and cons. A thicker carcass will have more puncture protection and may have a more damped feel to it. However, it will be heavier and as there's more material in the sidewall of the tyre, it could be less supple. This can change how efficiently it rolls. As a thicker carcass tyre is inherently stronger, in a mountain bike application we might be tempted to run a little less pressure. A thinner tyre might be run at a touch higher pressures to guard against punctures and with that suppleness it should still deliver grip and comfort. As ever, the carcass you choose will depend on the balance you want between weight, rolling efficiency, puncture protection and grip. As an extension, we might also quickly consider tyre compound 2. A soft compound tyre will give more grip for a given pressure as the rubber itself boosts traction. So you might consider adding a touch of pressure as this will give you more puncture protection and stability while retaining that grip. Finally, let's look at front and rear tyres. The front tyre's role is very much one of grip, both of braking and cornering. We know that lower pressures increase grip, so as long as you're not so low as to induce tyre roll in a heavy corner, we want to increase grip as much as we can to boost that control. The rear wheel generally has to put up with more abuse. It's the one that's most likely to suffer a puncture. Furthermore, we tend to find it's the draggier of the two due to rider weight distribution. While the relationship between pressure and rolling efficiency is complex, on a mountain bike we usually run our rear tyre pressures a little higher than the front. It usually makes it roll faster and adds puncture protection. So hopefully that's given you a taste of things to come. There's a lot of detail up there which I hope isn't too overwhelming. However, they are all things to consider and illustrate why tyre pressure is a continuous process of trial and error to find the right pressure for your setup the terrain and conditions. In a minute, I'm going to delve into a few numbers to help you pick a starting point. However, just before then, I have two very quick caveats to what I'm talking about in this video. First off, I'm assuming that your mountain bike is set up tubeless. This means the inner tube has been removed, the rim sealed with a rim strip or its UST, a tubeless valve and sealant has been added. Tubeless setups puncture less and give better ride qualities as the friction between the tube and the inside of the tyre slightly inhibits the tyre's ability to deform to the trail. I'd recommend investigating this if you are still running tubes. You can also run tubeless tyres at slightly lower pressures as you reduce the risk of pinch flats where an inner tube gets pinched against the rim and punctures. Secondly, I'm not talking about tyre inserts, that's for another time. These are rings of foam that sit inside a tubeless tyre they offer a range of potential benefits, including increasing tyre stability, puncture protection and tyre security. Generally, they allow you to run lower pressures. OK, finally, to the numbers. Again, here's another caveat. These numbers are based on my personal experience, but I'll include all the background information to try and help you find the right pressure for you. Tyres usually have, on the sidewall, a lot of information to digest. This may include the carcass type, width, compound and maximum and minimum pressures. As a general rule, you shouldn't go above or below these, but many riders do run lower pressures without any issues, particularly on a tubeless setup. Obviously, you do so at your own risk. So let's take me as an example. I weigh fully kitted up around 80 kilos, and generally speaking I ride a trail bike on mixed terrain and conditions with a 2.4 inch tyre on a 30mm rim. With a medium strength carcass tyre and a regular stickiness compound, my starting point is around 23 psi in the front and 24 psi in the rear. This should give me a decent mix of grip, control, tyre stability, rolling resistance and puncture resistance. If I was going to pop a 2.6 inch tyre on there, I'd potentially drop to around 21, 22 psi in the front and 23 on the rear. Alternatively, a 2.2 inch tyre on a slightly narrow rim might be run with say 25 in the front and 26 or 27 at the rear. As mentioned, in rocky terrain, I might add a couple of psi, but if it was wet and muddy, I'd drop down a couple, even as low as 20 or 21 in the front tyre, if it was nice and wide and the tyre said I could. There will be riders who want to ride at higher pressures overall for other reasons. 
For example, if you regularly burp tyres and have a particularly aggressive cornering style, then higher pressures will keep the tyre securely locked into the rim. If you find burping tyres to be a problem on your trails with your riding style, then you might want to look towards maybe even the higher 20s. Perhaps from my above example, you can start to work out where you might want to be. It's worth noting that the differences in pressure look relatively small, a couple of psi here or there. However, we've found that the bigger the tyre volume, the more noticeable small changes are. I'm also using a digital pressure gauge, which is a really handy tool to get accurate readings and also allows you to fine-tune pressures out on the trail if you're really trying to get things dialed in. Context is everything too, so if you're going to start experimenting with tyre pressures, I'd really recommend getting hold of a digital pressure gauge and using it consistently to get a good impression of how the various factors I've spoke about influence one another. So how do you know if you've got the pressure right? Well, if I'm on steep, slow technical tracks or fast and high-low tracks, if I can feel the front tyre roll as I push it or if I start feeling harsh knocks and dings through the rim when I hit a rock or root, I know I need more air in my tyres to give better stability and puncture protection. If my tyres are too high, when I ride over rocks or roots, especially if they're crossing my track at an angle and my tyre feels like it pings off or slides off in an uncontrolled manner, or I'm struggling to hold a line when the trail is off camber, perhaps I need a little less pressure in there. It's a real balancing act, so get out there and start experimenting. Thanks again to our sponsors Pirelli, and of course, don't forget to like this video, drop some comments down below, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you get notified every time we upload a new video.